toy items usually have very long cooldowns, so you can't have too much fun with them. And some are much longer than others. So in this video, we'll basically go over some of the toys with crazy long cooldowns, which includes a lot of ties. To start off with lesson number 10, we have a toy called the Perfect Blossom. This toy has a cooldown of 24 hours, making it only usable once per day. Just a spoiler alert, most of the toys in this list are all tied to 24 hours. Now, when the toy is used, it creates three fell petal items in the player's inventory. When fell petals are used on most companion pets, they will turn that pet into a ghostly hue of green and taint them with fell energy. Added in World of the Draenor, specifically patch 6.2, this toy can be obtained in the jungles of the Tan An. However, this toy is a tad complicated to get because of the process one must go through in order to obtain it. It's not a hard process, but it is somewhat trivial and annoying. To start, you must go to the middle of the Zora Marsh in an area near the southern coast of the Tan An jungle. Under a big tree there, there will be a flower in the middle of a pond with a toxic purple fume surrounding it. Standing in this purple fog will give the player the Pollen Cloud debuff, which slows the player's movement and gives a heavy dot. In order to click off the flower and get the toy, the player must pick up and eat the mysterious fruits found on the ground in the area. Eating this item will grant the player the Pollen Protection buff, which counteracts the Pollen Cloud debuff. Finally, players can then walk into the purple fog to claim the Perfect Blossom toy. There's one main reason why this toy lands so far down this list at number 10, and that's the fact that the Fell Petal's effects last until cancelled or the pet is dismissed. Players' companion pets may be auto-dismissed when the player joins instances, change phases, or use their Hearthstone, as a few examples. Thus, the fell petals that the Perfect Blossom creates cannot be counted as permanent enchantments, since the effect they can add can easily be removed by accident. While the toy does create three fell petals at a time, that is not enough to detract from the fact that there's a 24-hour cooldown for an effect that can easily be removed unintentionally. And at number 9, we have a toy named the Jeweled Offering. This toy was added in the Dragonflight expansion and can be made by Jewel Crafters. This toy isn't the most exciting item, but it does have a cooldown of 24 hours. Since it's so boring, we've placed it pretty high on this list. The toy's in-game description reads, Humbly offer your most prized possession to whomever you consider worthy enough to accept it. Activating this toy will place a fancy chest with its lid open on the ground in front of the player. When a player clicks on this chest, they receive an item called the prized jewel in their inventory. This item is a poor quality and a unique conjured item with a tooltip description that says, Precious as it may be, this fragile gem crumbles at the slightest touch. Whomever offered this to you must truly value your companionship. When the prize jewel effect is clicked, the player performs a special animation and is given the enamored buff. This visual is a red jewel that has a little rainbow coming out from behind it. To craft the jeweled offering, jewel crafters will first need to learn the design for the item by reaching 30 skill points in the enterprising specialization. To actually craft the toy, it requires all of the items listed on screen. Up next is listed number 8 is the Jar of the Sun Warmed Sand. This toy was added in the Battle for Azeroth expansion and is sold by the vendor named Otella within the Caverns of Time. However, Otella is only available during the WoW's Anniversary event, which is a once-a-year event in November. Additionally, the toy itself cost 1,000 Time Warp badges, which is a pretty hefty price for such a small toy. When the Jar of Sunwarm Sand is used, it allows the player to perceive the world as if it was midday for two hours. In this regard, the toy is kind of like the antithesis of the inky black potion from Legion and the Shadescale toy, which turned the player's vision to that of midnight. In addition to its large price tag and limited availability throughout the year, the toy has a cooldown of one day, or 24 hours. To make matters worse, Otella also sells an object that's just called the Sunwarm Sand that has the same effect but only costs 10 Time Ward badges and has a cooldown of 10 seconds. So, while the Jar of Sunworm Sand is tied with the cooldown of the Perfect Blossom, the Jar's usefulness is much more hindered by the fact that it has a competing item that is cheaper and does the exact same effect, but with a much smaller cooldown. Why this toy has a cooldown of 24 hours is baffling, especially considering its counterpart, the Shadescale toy, has a cooldown of only one hour. And at number 7, we have the BFF Necklace. This toy's name comes from the acronym for Best Friends Forever, and drops from a rare in the Zone of the Townlong Steps from the Mr. Pandera expansion. The rare that drops the toy is named Huggle on the Heart Watcher, and he's located in the Temple of Niu Zhao Catacombs. Like the other toys on the list so far, the BFF necklace also has a cooldown of one real day, or 24 hours. What's interesting about this rare is that it actually has a Titanic Watcher model, this same model that can be seen in the Vault of Archivon raid within the Wintergrass Battleground at Northrend. In fact, this callback to this short raid from Wrath of the Lich King is actually a reference to the Captain Planet catchphrase. In the Vault of Archivon raid, there are four bosses with each of these Titan Watchers having an elemental theme. These include Archivon the Stone Watcher, who represents Earth, Corallon the Flame Watcher represents Fire, Emelon the Storm Watcher represents Wind, and Torvon the Ice Watcher represents Water. But to summon Captain Planet, a fifth element was needed, which was Heart. As stated in the iconic catchphrase, Earth, Fire, Wind, Water, Heart, Go Planet. By your powers combined, I am Captain Planet. 
Luckily, Hugalon provided the heart power, or at least he did until a player ruthlessly kills him for that toy that has 100% drop rate. In fact, Hugalon even tells you he loves you as he dies. The BFF necklace's only descriptions that it says offer the necklace. When used, BFF necklace gives the target player a BFF buff that reads Friends Forever. It lasts for one day of playtime, not real time, and this buff even persists through death, making it one of the few toys in the game that actually gives an effect that lasts even after a player has died. And at number 6, we have the first toy that dates all the way back from vanilla. The Snowmaster 9000 is a toy made with classic engineering and is learned from a schematic that can only be found in gift packages from the Feast of Wintervale. Specifically, the schematic can be found in the Smoky Wood Pastures gift packages from the Quests and Dailies, or from the Taking Present which can be found under the Wintervale tree starting December 25th. This toy has a 24 hour cooldown, but its cooldown is reduced during the Feast of Wintervale. Only engineers with a profession of 190 or more in classic engineering can use this item which turns one water into one snowball. Not only is this horribly inefficient, but since vanilla, there are now many more ways to easily obtain snowballs. To create the Snowmaster 9000, engineers need all of these items listed on screen. The notable part here is that to even make one Snowmaster 9000 requires four snowballs, and that the toy itself only creates one snowball per use. All this definitely sounds like goblin engineering at its finest. The Snowmaster 9000 lands at number 6 on this list because it can only be used by engineers and its schematic can only be obtained during a holiday. These two additional requirements place it ahead of the Perfect Blossom and the Jar of the Sunworm Sand Toys in terms of how niche and unhelpful the item is. The Snowmaster 9000's only redeeming quality is that its cooldown is slightly reduced during the Feast of Wintervale. While it is more of a novelty toy, there is something cute about this profession-made toy so it lands at number 6 on this list. And at number 5 we have Quill of Correspondence. This toy was added in the Shadowlands expansion and once again has a 24 hour cooldown. The Quill's tooltip reads, sends a letter to one of your best friends from the Ember Court. Within a day, they'll write back to you in the mail. There are 16 guests, or pairs of guests in total, with four of each in the four main zones in the Shadowlands. Additionally, each guest can respond with one of three different letters. This means in total, a player can receive up to 48 different letters when using the toy. We obviously can't go over every letter in detail, but most contain short, interesting antidotes and incidents. Among those guests that players can write to include Lady Vash, Alexandra Morgrain, and Lady Moonberry to name a few. Some of the highlighted letters include Plague Devise Merilith wondering where his shipment of oozes are, Stonehead eating one of your letters, and Clay flying above Palaga so he can't write a letter. To obtain this toy, the player must first be a member of the Venthyr Covenant, and then reach best friends with at least one of the members of the Ember Court. After that, a player can buy the toy item from Lady Alikna for 500 gold. This toy is one of the most unique in the game since it sends so many messages and in unique ways through the player's mailbox system. There are a lot of undertones and references in all of these different messages, so this fun toy lands at number 5 on this list. And at number 4, we have the Moonfeather statue. This fun toy item was added in Legion, it can be bought from Sylvia, the Dreamweaver's emissary and Loralith in Valshara for 500 gold after the players reach revert standing with the Dreamweaver's faction. Like every other toy in this list so far, the Moonfeather statue has a cooldown of one day. The Moonfeather statue description reads, place the Moonfeather statue on the ground. What's the worst that could happen? What happens next isn't pretty. As long as the player remains near the statue, strange changes begin to occur. Every two minutes, a new buff will be added to the player as a transformation begins to unfold. During the first stage, the player will receive a buff called Moonkin Feather. A Moonkin Feather will appear on top of the player's head and their head will start to feel itchy. During stage two, the transformation advances to the next stage and the next buff called Moonkin Molting. This buff causes your character to molt feathers periodically. The next stage, stage three, provides a buff called Feeling Moonkin. This buff turns into a moonkin that looks like the fallen moon feather with a reddish glow. The fourth and final is called Alver Come with Fever. This buff causes your moonkin character to burst into dance. After another two minutes, the buff fades and the player is back to their normal self. While toys that temporarily turn players into other creatures isn't anything new, the fact that this is a slow transformation toy adds another level of fun so it lands at the number four spot on this list. And at number three, we have the element infused rocket helmet. This is the third and final toy crafted from profession on this list. Additionally, it is the second toy from Engineering, as well as the second toy from the Dragonflight expansion. Like all the other toys so far in this list, the Element Infused Rocket Helmet has a cooldown of 24 hours. The toy's in-game tooltip says, guaranteed to propel yourself to a safe height above your surroundings. Now, you're probably thinking this toy is similar to some other toys that have been in the game from past expansions, like Aviana's Feather from World of the Draenor, or Borgat's Fiery Brimstone from Shadowlands. Using these toys will launch the player high into the air and can be useful for getting around, as long as you don't fall to your death. However, the element-infused rocket helmet is a big difference in the fact that it's a little bit overtuned. And when I say a little, I mean a lot. Using the element-infused rocket helmet hurdles their players so far in the air they can surpass orbit traversing the twisting nether, and eventually start to fall in outland. 
As such, it almost acts as a teleport, and this toy is actually a pretty nifty way to get to Outland from where you may be. To craft the Element Infused Rocket Helmet, engineers need to acquire the schematic by earning 15 skill points in the Mechanical Mind specialization underneath the Novelty subspec. The recipe also is pretty intensive since it calls for all of these materials listed on screen. Even though this toy has a cooldown of 24 hours and due to being engineered to use it, its teleportation effect can be very helpful. So it ranks pretty high on this list at number 3. And at number 2, we have a very interesting toy called the Coin of Many Faces. This toy, which also has a cooldown of 1 day, was added in the World of the Draenor expansion and can only be obtained while the Hollow's End seasonal event is active. When Hollow's End arrives, ghostly skeletal bone fleet pirates appear in the southern coast of Shadowmoon Valley in alternate Draenor and it's from there that the Coin of Many Faces has a small chance to drop. Using the toy will turn the player into a random garrison follower for 60 minutes. This includes followers from the opposite faction, and since there are hundreds of followers and some recognizable names amongst the ranks, there are just so many fun outcomes when using this toy. Additionally, unlike many other transformation toys, the player keeps their transformation buff through death, which can be handy in Battlegrounds. The Coin of Many Faces is also one of the few toys in the game that isn't soulbound, so it can be traded on the auction house. There is only one downside to the Coin of Many Faces, though, and that's the fact that players cannot turn into followers who are not a playable race, like the Sabaron. This is probably because those models don't have all the necessary required animations that regular player models have. The Coin of Many Faces is also a reference to a Song of Ice of Fire fantasy novels and its TV adaptation, Game of Thrones. In the media, faceless men are followers of the Many-Faced God who have the ability to change their appearance at will, as well as using coins to pay their debts. And finally, at number one, we have the Ogre Brewing Kit toy. This toy drops from an ogre mob named Stomper Krigo and Gorgron, and this toy has the longest cooldown in the game, with an entire week cooldown. It's unknown why this toy has such a long cooldown, since the toy itself doesn't really do anything remarkable. Not only is the cooldown a week long, but all it does is give the player an alcoholic beverage from World of Draenor. It also costs several reagents, making it one of the few toys that needs items in the player's inventory to function. Just to be able to use the ogre brewing kit, the player needs 5 Gorgron mineral water, 1 high mall hops, 1 mild spice, and 1 barley. In total, there are 15 different alcoholic beverages that can be fermented. However, many of these beverages can be bought from vendors anyway, further reducing whatever usefulness this toy had. As if all of that wasn't bad enough, in Wad it wasn't even a toy, so it took up one bag slot anyway. It wasn't until Legion that it became a proper toy. While we're further laying into this toy, it can sometimes give the player the ogre meat, which can only be used while Brewfest is active. This toy might be one of the worst, if not the worst toy in the entire game, which is quite the feat considering there are hundreds and hundreds of toys. Just to reiterate, this toy requires several mats, has a week-long cooldown, and usually just rewards the player with the beverage they could have bought from a vendor for 5 silver. Before we go, there is one toy that deserves an honorable mention. This toy is called Elune's Lantern and is the last toy in the game that we have not covered already that has a cooldown of 1 day. This toy is reward from the Elune's Blessing, which can only be completed during the Lunar Festival seasonal event. It also requires one solid stone that turns into an Elune stone. When used, the toy just shines a light on the player's head for 3 minutes. Alright, and that's the video. Until the next one, take care, and continue being awesome.